Lovely jubbly. Thank you very much, Matthew, for logging in today. We have our first ever Piano Magic session, and I'd love to introduce you to what I call my spaceship. Um, spaceship? What's that? Okay, so here we okay. go. Okay, yo. Um, so I'm a bit excited. I'm a bit excited, Matthew. I have to tell you. Yeah, it's cool, man. Enjoy it. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, here we go. So this is my spaceship from which I broadcast my piano lessons. Here we have an on-screen keyboard. Oh, that's cool. That's cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we have also multiple camera angles. I've also have my iPad hooked up where I have my sheet music here. Whoa. Um, and I can uh, annotate it and, and walk you through my music. I also have um, my, hey, why are you not working? Pardon me, technical issue here. Reconnect, okay. there we go. Here we also have my second camera which um, you can see my hands. And That's then I have interesting. A whole, I have a whole selection here of different camera angles, which I can click onto very quickly, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right, okay. But today, the purpose of today's session really is um, I want to uh, host these kind of group calls because I find that actually playing piano is sometimes a bit of a lonely road and working with other musicians you can bounce ideas off each other and learn as a community so that's the idea here is that we're um, having a community kind of environment and sharing ideas um, so i'd love to kind of find out more about you what you're what you're playing what your piano playing is like and also what kind of challenges you're facing okay and maybe we can um, work on like furilis Yeah. So first of all, um, can you can you tell me some pieces of music that you're playing? Um, yeah. Um, like I was just practicing, like, like. born free I, I i know maybe like 30 songs say uh but like it some some songs are a bit harder than others and then it, it takes quite a while like at least a week to like learn a song properly um mm. and also really still i'm still new to this so it's not like a, a completely natural yeah definitely so um so that's something that i commonly come across and my kind of um feedback my suggestion in that situation is to broaden your um, your repertoire, play a lot of different um, easy songs. Like um, if we're looking at the sheet music, for example, uh, Happy Birthday, which you don't yeah. really need to learn from sheet music. You can play it by ear. Um, but you know... yeah, let's see if you can read it. Octave. G, G, G. Excellent. Okay, cool. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, should we practice it? Should we play it again? Um, can you oh, play yeah. it again from... Yeah, I want you to get a little bit more comfortable with that melody. Oh, wow, you're playing the chords already. Genius. I mean, dude, I have been playing a little bit, actually. Okay. So... Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, no. But thanks. <laughs> can't see your oh can't sorry last bit. this is trait where it's changed it's changed Last one, I, I did it. I just did the chord, the G chord. Okay, so if I could suggest something straight off, what I would say here is, um, if you can um, find those chords with the left hand, 
and preempt them. So let's learn how to play them so we don't actually have to think, right? So there's there's three chords, right? If you look at the music, yeah. there's just three chords. There's C. Let's put this one on. C. Then we have B B F G. Big friendly giants. Can you play that? So go from five finger five three one two five two one like that. Okay, so watch me again. So I shall go like this. Okay, so we have five, three, one. Now look, we're gonna do maybe this will be better. The bottom finger goes down to B, and then we go to this finger. B F G. Can you play C E G and then B F G? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Go it's hard for you to see. Sorry. But you can you can hear it. I can I, hear I, it. I yeah, yeah. I'm I, I'm I listening. Wish I could hear. Sorry. Yeah, I'm listening. That's that's how I can tell. So that's good. Can you just do this? Go between those two chords. Do that a couple of times. Great, you got those. You got the first two chords. And then the last chord is C, F, A. So we go from C, we're stepping up. You see those two notes, they move up a step. What chord is that? That's an F chord, actually. We're I'm gonna decipher the harmony in a moment. Yeah. I just want you to get those into your fingers first. So it's in your brain and we're starting to learn now. Mm, okay, so we have three chords. Yeah, can you play C? This is a G chord. I'll tell you why in a second. C and then F and back to C. So three chords. C. I know G. I can just go down a bit. G. Let's see. This is like, I will see C, F, a G. How did you do the G? You did a, a different, a different, um, a different combination. Right. Um, so, uh, so let me explain a little bit about the theory of, of what we're doing here. So, um, in the key, in well, in any key, in a, in a, yeah, well, m m I think, no, most scales have seven notes. Right, that's that's a C major scale. If you want it for the top one, so yeah. that's a C major scale. So that means inside of C major we have seven possible chords. Right. Yeah. Now the yeah. most popular chords, the most commonly used chords, is, is normally one, four, five, six. I can give you a demonstration where if I play this. Yeah, those four chords can get you through 80% of songs. 80% of songs use the same four chords, usually in that pattern. One, five, six, four. You can listen to, um, uh, let it be, let it be, let it be. Let it be, yeah. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Something like that, right? So those are the, the um, four most commonly used chords. Now, if if you were to do this, see how much movement I have to do. So we're going to use what's called chord inversions. So instead of using chord one, 
and then in this piece of music we're going to G, we're actually going to G7. And you hear that, that extra note at the top. Okay. We want to resolve. So rather than playing, rather than playing C, hang on one second, one second. So hang, instead of going from C to G like this and back to C, we change the order of the chord and we actually take away the D note. So instead of that, that's, all, that's my chord. I take the G, I yeah. put it at the top and I take away the D from the middle. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a G7 chord. That's why it's notated as um, G7 in the music. So it goes C and then G7. Um, oh. So it's like... B, F, G. So what is it again? B, F, G. C. So we have C first. And then the next one is B, F, G. Memorize it as Big Friendly Giants. Big Friendly Giants. Big Friendly Giants. There we go. Thank you to my teacher, Lucinda, who taught me Big Friendly Giants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just with those three chords, you can you can do quite a lot. You can also add in a... But yeah, for, that, for now, we're just going to play those three. Um... And yeah, once you kind of get those finger, those chords into your fingers a little bit more, you can. Um... Yeah, you can kind of jump around them a little bit more like that. Like that. Yeah. So those those are three really cool chord inversions that you can learn. Does that make sense? And I. But... Yeah, I need to write that down. Maybe I forget that probably. Yeah, definitely. That's a good, that's a good shout. Um, I can send you this sheet music as well. It's actually downloadable on my website. <laughs> um, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. This, this is free on my website. Um, piano magic with Phil dot com. You can download it from piano my magic. My charger. I need to charge. Yeah, no worries, mate. Get your charger. Cool. So. Yeah. So yeah, you can download it if you want. I can send you a link afterwards, so you can download it, and um, or maybe I can even send you an annotated version of it, so you can so you can follow that. Okay. Along. Cool. Um, and yeah, so essentially, back to kind of my philosophy with what we're doing right now is, um, like obviously learning to play Furelies is great, but it's quite a difficult piece, and to lay the foundations it's like learning a language like the more vocabulary you can learn the the better right and learning more pieces of music even if they're easy it increases your musical vocabulary um so that's why yeah. I, i've started putting these um arrangements on there's like about 20 pieces i think on my website you can download free and um yeah follow the sheet music but you, you're following the sheet music quite well so well done you can you can already play sheet music um so that's why i would suggest like don't feel like bad about learning easy songs i think that's actually very good to learn easy peasy music like that because as i said it kind of expands your vocabulary Hello, does that, yeah does that make sense hello yeah 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 cool um should we learn that chord progression Can you play that chord progression? Would you like to learn it? What, uh, what is it? What, what's the chords? Chord um, C. So maybe, maybe I'll, I'll just play them. C, G, A, F. C, G, A, F. Excellent. Excellent. And are you yeah. are you using your fingers like this, like in a five finger position here? Okay, like this. Mm hmm. Yeah, perfect. You can use those fingers. You could use finger one, two, three, four. Also one, three, four, five. Um, 
but yeah, you can feel flexible. I mean, people usually avoid using the little finger because it's the most challenging to use, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, ideally. Cool. Perfect. So now you've got the left hand. You can play the right hand chords. And here we're not going to do inversions or anything or anything fancy. Just. Is it just all like root position, all white note chords? So they're quite easy. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite easy, yeah. Ah, lovely! You got it. Yeah, and then and then just um, play them. Play them. Can you play both hands together? Let's see. G. C, G, A, F. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then, so now if you've got it, you can kind of do something like this. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Do you want to try like that? Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um let's try that again. So what I, I noticed is that you went up. But you can also go down. So they're both following each other. They're like copycat. Um, two, three, four, two, three, four, one. Mhm. Mm and then you can also go, um, improvise a little bit and do some kind of rhythms like. Do you think you can manage that? Do you think you can manage to try and put some I'd, different rhythmic I'd patterns like in there? Sorry? I'd like to, but I've never done I've never done like that. No? To be fair. I'd like yeah. to though. Yeah, that's that's a little bit challenging because it's like um That's a different. I've never done that before though. But I, I mean how how do you how would you break it down? How would I break it down? So, um, I have like, essentially it's like you learn a lot of different rhythmic patterns and you kind of imagine them as different, like vocabulary. Again, I'm going to use a language, um, example, you have different vocabulary and the rhythms you might have are like, um, like, yeah, for example, together, right left left right left or we can maybe start from something easier like oh i get it like yeah um keep trying because I've, I've got another idea yes here you go I can also send you this. Um, so this is um, a selection of kind of different patterns you can do if that chord progression. So I'll just play, I'll play the whole sheet for you. So it goes. Yeah. 
This is going C A F G instead of C G A F, but you can copy the same idea. So that gives you an idea because essentially we just, thank you, <laughs> essentially we're just using different rhythmic ideas, but it's exactly the same chords every time, um, just four chords, using different rhythmic ideas. Like if we look at the sheet here, um, this first rhythm, for example, let's use red. So this one goes, um, I don't know how your vocabulary is, but crotchet, quaver, quaver, crotchet, crotchet. Um, and that kind of grouping, boom, bam, bam, boom, bam. It's four boom, beats bam. in a bar. Exactly. So that means that we've got so many different options for how we can, um, for how we can do that rhythm. So let me show you like, um, we can have like, well, yeah. How many different variations just starting off on like, that's, that's, um, left and that's right. Right. So that, so from mm -hmm. there. You can have left, right, left, right. That's just left, right, left, right. I mean, to be honest, that should be crotchets if you want to be super accurate. Right. Um, but then you can also do left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right. Matthew's logged out. Maybe his batteries died. Um... Well, for the listeners at home, we can just keep going. Thank you, watch. Um, <laughs> left, right, right, left, right, right. We have all these different rhythmical, um, different rhythmical uh, possibilities here. Or um, we can have, for example, how many different variations can you think of using the simple pattern of left, right, left, right? I quite like that one. Different, different rhythmical possibilities here. Um, let's check if Matthew is going to come back on. Hmm. Well, if Matthew isn't here, then I don't know what to do. Um, but yeah, essentially, this is the approach that I recommend is like try not to get to drill down and, and stuck on learning really difficult piece of music. Here we go. He's back. Hello, welcome back. I know, was, the cable came out slightly. That's why. OK, Bat battery died. Yeah, no worries. I presume so. Thank you for coming back. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So. Like, um, just in that, like, example of left, right, left, right, how many different rhythmic variations? I mean, it's it's virtually infinite. I mean, maybe if you're good at maths, you could say it's, like, 4 to the power of 2, 16. Or something, it might be something like, this. yeah, crazy like that. If there's yeah. four different variables, something like, it got to be... Yeah, like... there's four different variables on each, 1, 2, 3, 4, you can have either a crotchet or, a, or two quavers. And that's just doing that kind of simple rhythmic pattern. If you, you know, uh, change it to like, you know, um, like if you offset that one by one, one, one um, beat, um, it might be like, uh, it might look like this, rest, and then a okay. quaver. Okay. Yeah. How would that sound? Um, yeah, that's nice. Oh my god. 
and you know go on you think of something which 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 of these notes should we move uh, okay yeah maybe the 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 first one on the left the first one and what do you want to do with it do you want to maybe make it like a a, a two beat like a, a two um... yeah so two quavers how's yeah, your vocabulary do you know the quavers crotchets do you know all that stuff I've, i have revised it a lot but I, I i think i stressed out on it too much at the time that's why kind of in um, the American system, they use uh, the vocabulary of um, ho a quarter notes, half notes, eighth notes, which kind of makes more sense in a way because the English way of crotchets, quavers, minims, it's a bit, can be a bit confusing for some people. Yeah, especially at the beginning, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so that one would go... Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, well, you're, you're, the one you did, the, the offbeat you did was 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 really effective. The the off, yeah exactly yeah the offbeats are really cool. Um, do you wanna do you wanna riff on this a little bit more? Like what else could you do? Like what about if we did that one as an offbeat? Okay. Um, put it as a little. I call it the, the Quaver Rest and Elvis Presley because it looks like Elvis Presley's funny hair. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean that's why there's so many infinite. That's why, um, yeah, there's so many infinite options, and with um, this one, I just you know I just put in seven different rhythmical ideas here. Yeah, C A F G is is I think it's in a in a way it's a bit of an easier chord progression than C G A F. This is just C A F G, which I think is essential. I think that's like a first lesson kind of piece of music which you should try to learn. Do you want to try it? Try it? Try um. Okay. Try pick that up. So maybe it's a bit confusing that we've done C G A F and now I'm restructuring it to C A F G, but. It's quite nice because you go C, A, F, G, if you look at it, um, C, A, F, so it's jump, jump, and then back up to G. So try that pattern. C, C, A, F, G. G goes last. C mm -hmm. A F G. Yeah. Um and then can you do like so? Can you do it again, please? C A F G. So let me let me see some, see something. I think that when you're taking these chords, I call this the rock. Like imagine you freeze your hand, like it's as a rock, and you can lift it off. And I'm still holding that shape of the um, of the three note chord in that hand. Okay. And I can just no matter where I land, I'm just looking at my thumb. The other th the other two fingers are going to fall into place. Four, four different ones. Yeah, you just use the same chord shape, the rock. You just lift up the rock, and you're just moving your thumb. You just move your thumb. Just look at your thumb, and move your thumb to the next chord. And the other fingers, as long as you freeze them, like they're not moving up or down, you just freeze it like that. Like, see, I'm, can you see I'm holding that three-note chord there? So do, now it doesn't matter where I go. Maybe that's an exercise as well, like... Just lifting it and carrying it across to wherever it needs to go. Mm -hmm. Okay.
yeah, sweet. Yeah, and you can, um, then you can also break up the pattern. You want to try and break it up like C A C E G, like so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can eventually, I'm just going to jump over like five lessons later. <laughs> Normally you play that as a duet, right? The teacher would do... And then would student would jump on. Yeah. Fun, fun actually plays for improvising. Improvising time, yeah. That's what. That's when really I think you can have a lot of fun on the piano is when you start improvising, like with the chords. You know, I I wasn't playing anything pre-planned. I was just. Different rhythmic ideas in there. Cool. That's so good. Thank you. Well, you we can uh, listen back to this recording and uh, refresh your memory of something. Yeah. That would be good. You got a great setup. Thank you. Yeah, I've been um developing this. It took hours and hours to figure out, but it looks really cool now. It's amazing. Uh, that little touchpad looks like a little gizmo. Oh yeah, this. Yeah. This is this is literally just an um a, a number pad like just a normal oh, number wow. pad. That was actually like 10 pounds on on eBay like super no cheap. Way. But I've just got it rigged up so that the buttons do different um uh, you have settings. to link me that. That looks so amazing. Um, uh, I just need to get a camera on my keyboard, and then it would be like it'd be hundred percent. Actually, if I did it on my computer, I got like a, I got like a little camera. I could maybe, uh, like move. So maybe I could make it over the keyboard or something as a webcam. Could be yeah, that. you can do that. What I usually ask my students to do is, um, like from this perspective, is literally can they just get a camera? like yeah. this like that's the most basic setup like can you put a laptop over to the side so when you're having the lesson you can look at me like through here and then sure. i can see you play and i can see your fingers because right now i can't see your fingers yeah you can, I, i'm just I'm, I'm just i guess you you can hear stuff by ear but yeah you can't see yeah i, I like I, that's fine and just going by ear is, is fine most of the time but if you're getting a little bit more advanced i might want to see your fingers to make sure you're playing the right fingers for a piece of music sure should we learn there's there's another song that I think would be really great um, if if you think you've still got the brain capacity today unless you, if you're not too tired. Um, okay. Uh, let's put it as piano. Do you recognize that one? Yeah, yeah, of course. You ever tried sorry, to play sorry. it? No. No. Would you like to learn? Okay, yeah, sure. Cool, great, sounds, let's learn it. Sounds catchy. So, sounds like what? It sounds very catchy. Very ca Yeah, exactly. It's it's a great piece. I usually teach that like with like six-year-olds sometimes on the first lesson. If it's a bright six-year-old, they can usually get it on the first lesson. So let's go part by part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a bright six-year-old, Matthew. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I take it, I take it. <laughs> take the compliment. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> I'll maybe put this back on. So first of all, find where there's two black notes. Find where there's two black notes, take finger two and three in your right hand, like that, onto two black notes. So finger three and two, or two and three, onto two black notes. And then 
You're going to put one finger on the next black note on the bottom and the next black note on the top, like that. Mm -hmm. And then the left hand comes here, on this black note. On F sharp. Okay. And then you go like this. Three, two, left. Bang, bang. Those two notes go at the same time. I don't know if you can see them on the keyboard because it looks a bit... So, three, two, left. Bang, bang. The outside ones, not the middle one. Outside one. Oh. Yeah, the outside ones. Yeah. Three, two, left. Outside. I say bang, bang, or outside. Three, two, left. Outside. Oh, yeah. I might have the wrong one. I might have the wrong one. Play, so, play, what, play me what you got. I'll in, listen. In the left hand, it's which one? F sharp. Okay. And then it's, and then my, 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 what number one thing, number one from? Is um, A sharp. A sharp, A sharp, A sharp. A sharp, A sharp, A sharp. Watch my keyboard. This one and this one. Look, look at me okay. again. Got it. Yeah, you got it. Perfect. And then just go three, two, left, bang, or outside, three, two, left, outside. Can you, sorry, can you repeat that, please? Three, two, left, outside. Three, two, start off with three, two. Three, two. Three, two. Left. Yeah, you got it now. Cool. Let's do that five times. Can you do it five times in a row? That's two. Three more, please. Very good. That's it. That's the essence of it is just repetition, right? So should we go to the next part? So I'll tell you the whole story. I usually present this as a little story is we're starting off at home. So what we've learned that first one is we're at home. Three, two, left, bang, bang, three, two, left, bang, bang, at home. Then we go outside. Now we're outside. We stay outside and then we go back home. So home. Outside, outside, back home. Okay, we're going to break that down. So first of all, you've got that first one. Yeah. Now, left hand's going to go one, two, three, F sharp, D sharp, C sharp. Okay. F sharp, D sharp, C sharp, those three, all neighboring notes. Okay. And now the right hand, we're doing the outside one. Now we're going to slip inside. So we're going from these notes to these notes. From the black ones to the white ones, just inside. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sounds good. And it just goes left, right, left, right, left. White notes. So watch me play. Yes. And then...
Would it help if we have the music up here? A little bit, maybe. Yeah? Okay. So, this is, uh, the music goes like this. Oh, wow. If That's a can... lot of... Yeah, it, it looks it looks more complicated than it is. Um, so look, it goes three, two, left, bang, bang, three, two, left, bang, bang, three, oh, wow. two, left, right, left, right, left, right, bang, so bang. Yeah. There's so many shots, right? Yeah, technically, this piece of music is in the key of um, F sharp major. So it has all of the black notes and these two white notes. All the black notes and B and F. Two black notes, basically all black notes. <laughs> Three, two, left. Bang, bang. Don't forget left. Oh, and then it comes back in. At the end, it comes in. Mhm. Mm exactly. That's that's this chord. Mhm. Mm Don't forget the left note because you're just going. Three, two, left. Bang, bang. Three, two, left. Bang, bang. Okay. That's it. Nice, you got it. Cool. Yeah. Do you want to spend a few more minutes on that, or do you think that's enough? I can send you the music as well. Okay. Yeah, that, that was that was good. It looks very intimidating. I mean, at, uh, learning learning um, those many sharps, the F major thing, I think it's like great. It's quite a high grade. Um. Well, yeah, that's why it's a bit confusing, because it looks kind of more intense than it is, um, just because of those six sharps. <laughs> um. But it's actually a really easy piece. Um, I wouldn't usually show this, show the sheet music to a student. And also, I think when you're playing it, um, when I'm sat next to my student, I can um, sh adjust the fingers really quickly, which is one of the disadvantages of online lessons is that you can't like move someone's finger that quickly. But it also trains you to become more independent. So it's not really such a bad thing. Um, I can guide you, but I need you to do the work with your fingers. Okay, you know? okay, sure, yeah. Cool. So we're in the last 10 minutes. Um, so I think what I'd like to discuss is furthering your repertoire. You said you've got about 30 songs that you can play. Just, uh, I've been practicing this Christmas book mostly. Oh, sweet. I, I, I get like a mildly, this, this is Once in Rural David City. Do you know that one? You've yep.
yeah nice I've, I've i've also got a christmas book that's got like both of those pieces that you just played oh wow oh yeah. good yeah um i was like playing hallelujah earlier <laughs> nice so i think something i'd i'd suggest as a as a teacher for you although this is quite a challenge to to do is um what i feel like is lacking is a little bit is um keeping a rhythmical consistency like if you're listening to a piece of music and um uh oh there we go hallelujah um da, 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 da. So that sheet music isn't very helpful, but I'll I'll just portray it through through um, our previous chord progression that we're working on. If you're going like this, as a listener, that's really like uncomfortable because that's like okay, we've got a flow two three four one two three four, and I'm fumbling my note. So um, the way I'd say you can practice that is really try to like almost go into a meditative state, like a flow state where you're kind of, you calm your mind and you're able to keep that kind of rhythm, like almost like as a heartbeat, because music in a way is reflecting a heartbeat or like a, 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 a step, like if we're walking or something. And if you're walking, As a, as, a, as a listener, that's quite uncomfortable, right? Do you see what I mean? What do you mean? Like, it's, how is it uncomfortable? If, if, you, if you pause um, before oh, you play yeah. the note. Yeah, that's, that's just something that you need to get a bit more technically comfortable with jumping between, between chords. Like, um, yeah, you need to just get more. Two, two, three, four, one. It's almost like... I don't know, comparing it to like some physical activity, like say doing bicep curls, you need to keep training them, they get that bicep stronger, stronger until you can, because eventually it won't be like happen in a day. But over time, the more you practice playing a chord progression like that, the more confident you're going to be with going from one chord to the next chord to the next chord to the next chord without stopping. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's really cool, man. Yeah. I can um, practice now. <laughs> awesome. So so you have to keep that like maybe maybe if you can play with a metronome or something. Yeah. That's really good, yeah. So there you you were keeping in in time with the metronome, yeah. So that's something you, maybe maybe the metronome might be a good tool for you, because um, we need to get to that point where you're able to flow between the chords. I mean, obviously that's that's difficult. I'm not I'm not saying it's easy, but like that's when you're you can kind of get into the flow with the music really well. Um... Oh. 
I wonder if we can... I wonder if you'd like to learn uh, this kind of power chord thing. This is a very kind of standard. This is a very standard kind of um, chord shape. So you've got this chord as well. But the thing is, um, when you have a chord down here, it's quite dense, like it's quite muddy. Like you prefer to have chords around the middle of the piano. Yeah, sure, always. But if you've got the chord here, it's quite, quite dense. So what, what we can do is do what's called a power chord. C, G, C. So you've got the octave and the G in the middle. C? C, G, C. C. Oh, C, G, C. And again, you can do the same chord progression of um, C. You can try doing C, G, C, G, C, G, like that. Uh, your, 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 your mic is a little bit in, like in the same line of your hand. Oh, your is that in the way? A tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that's cool. That's super cool. Yeah, that's perfect. C, G, C. C, G, C, C, G, C. And then do C, G, C, G, C, G. Yeah. That's like the common chord, well, like way of playing chords. Like you'll find that in like, I was thinking even Adele rolling in the deep, you could probably do. How does it get rolling deep to go? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I've seen it arranged with that kind of chord pattern. And then this is really great because this is when you can open up to playing some improvisation, like. It sounds kind of messy because I'm not really thinking too much about the notes that I'm playing, but that's just improvising. That's once I've got that chord progression, or you can even do it with the previous chords. Improvise with your right hand. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, uh, like what's going on completely. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm playing the chord progression in my left hand. Oh, the ones from before. Yeah, it's the same chord progression, but I'm doing it as the power chords. And that's called a power chord. Oh, oh, okay, I got it now. It's called a power chord because it sounds very powerful. <laughs> you missed the three, you missed note three. You missed the three, exactly. Because that's the one that makes it muddy. Like, listen to the difference between this and... See, it sounds powerful. You can feel that power in it. Sure. Okay. And then, um, and then with the right hand, I'm just improvising. Maybe, for example, a good starting platform would be just um, improvise in a five finger position. So like, for example, So I'm just doing that with my left hand. And then with my right hand, I'm improvising in a five finger position, just using five notes. I'm not so, dex I'm not so dexterous with both hands. I can kind of get away putting a left chord on or like a couple of things or putting it together if it's mixed up. But at the same time, I'm not, both hands at the same time, it's not like, it's not, it's not firing. Perfect. So, like so that. that's actually, that's um, um, a, um, a moment which would be like, okay, if we can't, you know, we're trying to go from this step to this step. You're trying to skip yeah. three steps along the way. What's the next yeah. step? The next step would be just play it as a, 
as a chord together. One, two, three. Or just even one. So try just play the chord and then play a few notes in the right hand. Try that, yeah? Perfect. And does your piano have a pedal? Uh, not connected at the moment. Not connected. We don't need it right now. I mean, if you want to find it. Um, but that's really when the fun begins, is when you just hold down the pedal, because you can just make music so easily. For example. Once you get comfortable with doing that, I don't know if I'm jumping so many steps ahead, but once you get comfortable in doing that in C, then you could start improvising in. Obviously, the step in the step in the mid middle would be. So like I think maybe maybe some a nugget of information you can take from today is that kind of idea of if you want to go from where you are now like up five steps like that's quite difficult but you can definitely f find yourself some milestones some steps along the way that's gonna um, help you get there so it's not too like jumping into the deep end and be like how am I gonna do that that's ridiculous but you can find a step along the way where it's like I'm not gonna play all four chords in the left hand because that's way too much but I can play one chord. For example, does that make sense? It's cool. cool. Well, with your right hand, you you were just doing anything. Yes, that's improvising. Yeah, that's just just okay, cool. feel free. I mean, you could even just use one finger like this. But it sounds nicer if you can kind of do something like. Actually, maybe the last thing we'll do today because I think we've come up to the to the to the hour mark. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is is do you know how to play a scale? C major scale, like D major. Oh, it's been a while. D major. Okay, let's get that a bit smoother. It's two sharps, no. I said C major, not D major. Nice. Can you do it two octaves? Nice. <laughs> and you kept the tempo pretty well there. Um, I always make that mistake. I always go really fast and my student is trying to emulate what I've just played. I should have just played it like this. Because that's the speed I'd like you to play. You see, I'm, I'm really keeping that tempo so clean. That's the way you should practice this. Yeah? I've not, not done scales in a while. <laughs> Good, yeah, you're keeping the tempo a little bit more solid there. Um, okay, well... Perfect. Well, I think that's it for today. Um, hopefully you've learned something. That was and... cool. That was actually really well done, I have to admit. Um, the, the improvisation, I think, is a really cool thing. And uh, the mixture of um, like like songs you had, there was a couple easier ones and then a couple um, trickier things. And, 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 and just like a power chord. I never really practiced power chords yet, so that was good as well. And, uh, and, and the camera as well. Uh, was was kind of spot on. You put a bit of effort into that, um, and 
I, I just I just feel I need to get an extra camera. I don't know how I do that. How I add it to uh, how I add it to the whole setup for, from my side. Um, I can I can help you out with that for sure. Um, because uh... I mean that would be helpful. That would be like the last step, and then it would be pretty much. <clears throat> well, if if you if you like, um, I'll just spend a minute. Maybe if there's any listeners, we can just uh, I can just show you what I'm doing here. Um, is basically. Um, so what I've got is this is my this is my view on my computer. So I've got this application here, which has um, oh oh yeah, if I do that, then you're going to see. Um, here we have different scenes, and each of the scenes is numbered. Like you can see one, two, three, four, five. That's um, numbered according to my number pad. And then here we have sources. So the source, for example, I have one which is the Mac webcam. That's my logo. Um, that's the feed from the piano. That's from my sound card. Uh, that's the display capture of the Mac. So it's it, this this application took me quite a while to figure out. It's it's a bit complicated, but um, this is called OBS, and it allows you to um, get like. like for example, let, let me just show you. Right. So if here I can click on Add, I have this one called iOS Camera because I have um I have my phone connected to my computer by USB. And this is called iOS camera. And if I add it, then there, that's like another video feed and I can just position it. So like it's, it's infinitely customizable. So if you wanted to have a two camera setup, um, I can show you how to do all of this if you, if you want, but, um, maybe, yeah, that'd be good. Cause it's like, uh, I could, uh, my, my, my computer is just behind here, you know, so I could just put the keyboard and I could just put it next to the computer and uh, yeah. so maybe I could even get the, the keys so you can see what I'm playing. Because I mean, or not, or leave it. But uh, just another view, a minimum would be great. Well, I mean, if if you want to do do lessons and for us to be more interactive, we then yeah, that would be cool. But it's just wondering, like, um, do you really have a need for that? Like, I mean, are you doing any kind of Zoom classes? Although, if you are doing Zoom classes, because you're doing you're doing languages as well, that well, might be I, really I, that would be really cool because you could have a second one. You could have a second camera on your desk, and then you could be like illustrating things and showing the sheet to the thing. Or you could do oh, what I've got, which is have like a whiteboard, because I've got my, my iPad is basically functioning as a whiteboard, you know? Because if I want to, if I, um, I just had a lesson with Natalia uh, de Costa Rica, and uh, she, uh, she's really amazing. She really tries hard, but she's more of an academic person. And I'm more of a, like a, a more of a, 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 an airy fairy person. So I, 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 I would rather draw what she's teaching. I could be drawing at the same time as she's teaching it to reinforce it, hmm. for instance, you know, and then she could still see that, like, and then it, it might, it just, you know, it adds that extra, like, you know, like that extra something is something more, but no problem. Yeah. I mean, I usually record my language lessons as well. And I, I don't look over all of them, but I look over an, a few of them, you know, and, and sometimes it's just like, it's nice to know that you can refer back to something in case you forgot it or you, something like that mm. yeah exactly and i mean i don't normally record lessons this is because this is a bit more like oh. a, you know i mean if it's I'll, i i would like if there's something that i need to show the student and save it for later i would click record during the lesson and turn it off like right now like i don't know maybe we should wrap up and then we can just have a chat like so it's not on the on the record you yeah know? yeah let's do that let's... should you do that okay well yeah, thank you very much for anyone who's been watching today and I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And thank you very much to Matthew for, for joining me today and for sharing your music. And I hope you keep practicing your piano because it sounds really good. Um, and yeah, well done, my friend. It's like an infinite pool of, of it can, it's a big rabbit hole, but thank you. I, I think it's some progress and uh, some things for me to think about. Yeah, it's, it's a big rabbit hole. I mean, it's infinite. Like I'm, I'm a student. I know that I've got so many like things I don't know, but you're always a student, right? The teacher is always a student. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop the recording there. So all the best.